Right, I'm here with Martin Dreyer, FIDE Master Martin Dreyer, uh, FIDE Master of Chess. Uh, when did you get your FIDE Master Martin and why? Well, it was a long time ago, it was, I remember it was back in 1993 and it was just after the uh, 1992 Olympiad in the Philippines, so a long time ago now. And so you've won the New Zealand Championships more than once, haven't you? I won it twice. The first time was in uh, 1992. Yeah. And then um, I managed a second title four years later in 1996. And so now that you're 34, okay, um, you, you've sort of um, slowed down a little bit on the, other than in lightning chess, you just seem to be formidable in lightning. Um, but you've slowed down on the match play. Any sort of reasons for that? Well, times you know, have I changed. I might know already. Times have changed. Um, in 1998, I, I guess I focused then more on my um, my business career, and uh, chess doesn't really pay the bills here in New Zealand, so um, I was never going to be a professional chess player. It was never going to be a full-time job for me. Do you so think it could have been close for you to, to oh, the only, the, only, the only New Zealander that ever um, was capable of doing that was Murray Chandler. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, he made it to the world's top 30 at one point, yeah. um, but he had to supplement his income with uh, other things I believe oh, he was doing. So yes. it's never easy. You've really got to be in the, in the top 10, top 20 back, even back then yeah. to make a good living through, through playing chess. But chess was certainly one of the highest paying sports in the world. It was up there uh, only second to boxing at one point. But that was for a world championship match involving just two players. So other tournaments could be quite lucrative, uh, but nowhere near as uh, paying as well as, say, tennis or soccer or, or other sports, if you like. Which is on tomorrow, apparently. The rugby. The rugby. The rugby's on tomorrow, yes. Yeah, OK. So I, I thought you said the All Whites. No, no, I meant, what did I say? I, <laughs> I said tennis and soccer. So uh, OK. Now, the All Blacks rugby. Um, again, be on tomorrow, so good. Be watching that one. I've got I've got some um, people that I mingle with that are uh, that are pretty well way up there in the sporting field of rugby. Right. Yes. Um, that sort of thing, but I won't go on about that. Okay. Um, who taught you chess, man? Who taught me chess? That's a very good question. Um, I know, a mate at school I know. tells me that uh, he taught me chess. My, my <laughs> good friend Peter. And uh, yeah, he did have something to, to do with that. My mum and dad taught me a little bit about the game as well when I was when I was young. Um, it Can you not a... home in on who actually did teach you, or did well, you think it was a mixture? I think it would be a mixture. I don't oh. think I could say that any one person taught me from where to go. Um, or did you teach yourself too a bit? Oh, I think I taught myself a little bit once I had an understanding of the game and wanted right. to improve. Um, mm -hmm. When I was younger, we didn't have computers, and we uh, had to read books and do things ourselves. Generally, I went to the club once a week and learned a bit through playing at the Open Chess Centre. But um, in terms of um, doing my own learning, as I say, we didn't have the internet, and we didn't have very strong computers back in the 1980s. So I had to do mm. everything uh, mm -hmm. like you. I had to do generally everything myself. Yeah, and yeah. Teach myself. Yeah. Mm. So um, yeah, that would be a question for you. Um, did you have anyone that actually came on board and um, coached you or something to that effect? No, that was perhaps a mistake that I made. If I'd, um, if I'd sought out some, um, some coaching and some proper tutoring, which um, was available, I guess, maybe I, I would have, um, you know, maybe I would have improved a bit faster, I'd like to think. Maybe my results would have been, um, would have been perhaps a little bit better. When I came to Auckland in 1981, it certainly helped. I was um, born in Wellington originally, mm -hmm. and uh, yep. Wellington wasn't, um, you know, when I was there, it wasn't one of the strongest places to play chess in New Zealand. Certainly Auckland had most, if not all, of the best players. Yes. So uh, coming to Auckland uh, certainly helped in joining the Auckland Chess Centre, who I'm quite grateful for in terms of what I've learnt, and, uh, you know, made me a much better player. And, um, yeah, I guess it eventually accumulated in um, my best result, which was, of course, Winning the New Zealand Championship, so yeah. Good. Well done. Yeah. So, um, I understand that America, um, they pay their players quite well. They seem to get quite good meaty rewards for their play. Well, more the Russians, really. More the Russians for chess. In America? In America, um, I don't know too much about that. Certainly it's not as popular as it is in, in Russia. Right. Um, in Russia, chess <clears throat> may still be. I think it used to be uh, compulsory. I think maybe it... It still is in schools mm. to play, um, to learn, and to play chess. 
So uh, they take their chess very seriously in Russia. Um, Bobby Fischer obviously raised the profile of the game in America, but that again was back in 1972, and he didn't really play after that World Championship match against the Russian Boris Spassky during the, the Cold War period, and chess mm -hmm. kind of went a little bit quiet in America after that, but we've got the World Chess Championship on at the moment, and the, uh, the Challenger. And so what, yeah, that's one of the questions I was just thinking of asking you, and I forgot what it was, but you have alerted my brain to it again, because obviously we've got the World Championships going on now. What do you think of um, Karana and um, Carlson? I've been watching it a little bit. Again, my interest in chess has kind of waned a little bit too with the retirement of uh, Gary Kasparov, which is around um, you know my era and your era. Yeah, like. he's a bit younger than me, actually. He's one year younger than me, or 11 months younger than me. Yeah, I mean, I still consider him to be the greatest chess player ever, even yeah, better than Bobby Fischer. I think Fisher. I agree. Um, and, and certainly computers have changed uh, the way we play chess now. People are now searched and frisked at chess tournaments before and after yeah, games yeah. to make sure they're not getting any uh, computer assistance. Yeah, and it's, it's possible to have a really strong program on your uh, on your phone these days, which is it's well, you could probably stick one and just on a pen or yes, something. Yep. Who knows? It's yep. just ridiculous. So people have got to go through um, what they call the metal detectors. Yeah, I've heard about that. The, that happened at the recent at the Olympiad, Olympiad too. Yeah, at yeah. the Olympiad, I heard. Yeah. yeah. So um, when you're dealing with hundreds and hundreds of players, it gets to be quite a administrative nightmare having to do that. So when we go through those machines, when they check you for any electronic devices and all that sort of thing, do you think that you're getting any x-ray sort of radiation sort no, of scarring? No. no, I imagine it's just like going through the x-ray <laughs> machines at the airport and uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think anyone is, uh, I don't think we're having any sort of problems there. <laughs> so I'll ask you a question uh, off the cuff here and you answer it if you'd like to or not. Um, now um, what do you think of um, uh, GSM-5? GSM-5. Now, I'm not even sure what GSM-5 oh, is. I've probably got the word wrong. GSM-5 uh, is that 5G, a, I mean. 5G. 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 What do now, you think? Are we I've talking, are we talking about a computer stories. program? Or, <laughs> no. Uh, the, no? New, the new interstellar cellular network um, abilities. Right, no, I, I don't have a clue about that. <laughs> yeah, I've heard so that it's I'm, going to be quite hot. <laughs> all right, well, I, I guess it'll be interesting to see, but no, I'm probably not the right person to give an opinion on that one. Okay. All right. Uh, so when did you actually start playing chess? What age? Well, I guess I was around, how old would I have been? About eight or nine when I first eight started nine, playing. Eight or nine, right. And I just sort of played casually and in school and class. Uh, when uh, the teacher allowed, and that was um, that was quite good fun. But I I played in my first individual proper tournament in 1980, and it was the Wellington um, Wellington School Pupil Championship. That was my first tournament. So I would have been how old was I then? 14 when I when I did that. So you're quite good then, weren't you? Well, I wasn't that good. I mean, where did I finish oh. in that tournament? I think I finished about eighth equal or eighth something. Eighth equal in, in Wellington. Wellington. In Wellington. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so but that, say, that, that was my first tournament. Is that your worst result ever? Well, Eight I mean, people. when I consider how long I've been playing, um, you could maybe in a, in a school people event that would be one of my worst results. But again, it was my first, my first tournament. If you so know. you got first. That was your first. My first, first tournament. No, I was actually thirteen. Result, I but the number eight is a lucky number, of course. So let's not forget. <laughs> true. Number eight is <laughs> true. It is. A but lucky number. You, again, you need to be in the top two to qualify for the for the regionals, the New Zealand School Pupil Championship. Yeah, I yeah. Was, uh, I was nowhere close to that. So That's again, it was just it was an experience, something to to get me started, and um, yeah, yeah, I did enjoy that uh, enjoy that event, and I do remember it being my first tournament. Yeah, I got some memories of that era, not for me, but for well possibly for me too but I've got some memories of the era of um, two players purportedly um, always the one player was beating the other until they got to the school people champs and the other one beat the other one <laughs> and there was a little bit of a sort of a quite sort of a, indignation from his opponent that said, oh, I feel like punching you in the head. <laughs> uh, yeah, that Do you get that sort of thing? No, um, no, no, we don't have that sort of very often in chess, fortunately. Um, but, you know, again, chess, um, there are all types of people that play chess and, um, you know, it's a, 
like any sport, you want to um, succeed. And um, sometimes people can get upset when they lose. Yes, I've found that I've found that out recently too, um, but not from losing. Um, uh, actually, winning or oh, something like that. Okay, why do you play chess, Martin? Or why why do you still play chess? What what's what do you think? It, well, I think it's like with it? any sort of sport. Um, if you're if you're reasonably successful at it, I think you you're always going to sort of. Um, continue to play it's almost like you get addicted to it so if we think of um, Roger Federer for example as a tennis player I'm not com comparing myself with Federer but oh you could <laughs> when he <laughs> stops playing and uh, you know he's getting a little bit older now I think he's about 37 uh, in a few that's years old time. <laughs> yes for tennis players it is I oh, know um, he'll still continue I think to play in, um, in other events casually um, he'll never stop hitting a hitting a ball with a racket uh, right. Just like Pele continues to play, um, continues to play in soccer, the old soccer game, and, and things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we it's a sort of a, a skill that um, you never totally lose, and um, you continue, but obviously at a much lower level once it comes time to um, stop playing it professionally. I think so. Yeah, for the professionals, of course. Yeah. Um, what does chess do for you? Well, I think it certainly helped me, you know, in terms of um, problem solving and things. And, mm -hmm. and that's why I think, yes. you know, it does give advantages to a lot of younger people when they learn to play chess. It, it helps them look at problems slightly differently um, because there is a, a solution in a lot of positions as to what the best move is. And you need to work it out using a logical, um, you know, a logical theory to, to go through the different um, possibilities. And I think it certainly helped me that way, both in business and in uh, my own personal life and it's given me a, a different outlook on the way to tackle certain um, problems if you like. Um, so chess has, has helped a lot with that. Oh, it's good. Been good. So uh, what has chess got for you? A little bit similar, it's a little bit different. What has chess got for me? Well I mean it's given me some happiness and obviously um, winning the New Zealand Championship, becoming the best chess player in New Zealand if you like, it, it meant quite a bit to me at the time and it's given me um, the opportunity to play go and play overseas and, and represent New Zealand and, mm -hmm. and meet a lot of interesting people. Um, yeah, yeah. I remember meeting um, Kasparov in, in 1992 <laughs> and oh, having wow. a chat with him and talking about him coming to New Zealand and playing a match um, here in New Zealand. So um, from that point of view, yeah, it's, it certainly opened some doors and it certainly helps, I think, having it uh, even on your... CV I found, you know, when I was applying for jobs. Something slightly different to put <laughs> down there. New Zealand different, chess yeah. champion, you know, people think, oh, this guy, you know, chess player, you've got to be intelligent, of course, to, to play chess well. So you so, think uh, that... I think that has helped, yeah. You think um, that's a very important thing, intelligence. It probably has. Um, so what what did Gary, Kasp Gary Kasparov say to you in regards to answering that question about coming to New Zealand for a match? What? Well, he was, well, he was quite keen. Um, one of the things about um, Kasparov and like other top sports people is they don't, you know, play, do these sort of things for free. Um, they do charge a significant amount of money. So we, we talked about possible avenues in terms of things and getting him here and what he would do while he was here. Um, obviously, there, we don't have any chess players in New Zealand that could um, to play, um, play Kasparov one-on-one. -on -one. There was a possibility of um, him playing a match against... Um, Murray Chandler, uh, New Zealand's um, best ever player, who a sort of a return match for, for the, the the loss that he encountered with. Yeah, well, he'd never beaten um, Murray. He'd played him obviously <laughs> quite a few years ago. So there was we were talking about doing that. We we're also talking about a possibility of playing a simul against um, twenty different people here in New Zealand. They'd all be um, they'd all be Aucklanders, people. wouldn't they? Cause well, no, they'd be put up by different businesses. The, the, oh, the businesses. People like so. Bob Jones might play them and things like that. Oh yes, that was the idea. Oh, and yeah, then we also had a plan for him to play um, the New Zealand um, Olympia team in a clock symbol. <laughs> and he was happy to do that, to play up to, say, six boards. Yeah. And, um, you know, he would have done, scored, obviously, very heavily in, in that. Yeah, he would have. Um, Nigel Short came to New Zealand not so long ago and did something similar. Uh, the media dubbed that as Beauty versus the Beast, and he played... Uh, sorry, I think Beauties versus the Beast. And he played about um, a dozen women simultaneously. And he had um, a little bit of... There was a little bit of political. Oh, there was, but it all again, it was all good for chess, and it raised the uh, profile <laughs> of the game, and it, and it helped do some things here, and um, it was all very good. And we had a good um, tournament 
as well that Nigel participated in. So I've just got this question now because on the way here to Auckland, uh, just about coming here for this, just alone, I don't care. Uh, on there, on that eccentric, uh, but a lady next to me, um, she said to me, um, oh, I love that movie, the, what's it called now? The Dark Horse, I said. And, and um, you yeah, know, no, not that movie, she said. No, I'm just joking. She she loved that movie and, and all that sort of stuff. She said it was really inspiring. So what are your thoughts about that movie, Martin, The Dark Horse? I haven't actually seen that movie, I don't think. Oh, okay. Two stars in that so movie. So it's about Genesis and. Oh yes, yes. No, Genesis I never got around to seeing it, and I, I should, um, I must watch that at some point. But no, there's been a number of different movies about chess over the years. I'm just uh, Night Moves, I think, was one of them. Yeah, um, which yeah. I did see many, many years ago. Um, I remember being in the, um, I watching it when I was um, New Zealand champion that year. And, uh, oh. Yeah, so that was, um, that's why I remember watching that. Uh, particular movie but um, yeah a lot of good movies about chess and they're often um, you know built into certain films there was a, a chess scene in uh, one of the James Bond um, one movies f uh, from Russia with love so uh, yeah, chess yeah, there was, was, yeah yeah chess has been on uh, a number of different um, TV programs and things of course what do you do if things don't go well for you or what did you do what oh, look, I mean, you, you, you have to accept that you're not going to win every game. Even Kasparov doesn't win every game he plays. And, um, well, he almost did. Well, he almost did. He, won, he obviously won a lot of tournaments and he was very successful. Bang, bang, um, bang. When I was younger, I used to take losses a lot harder. I never never blamed my opponent, I don't think. I always sort of accepted that, um, you know, if I'd been outplayed or something like that. Sometimes you can make a mistake and, and ruin a good position, in which case, again, you've only got yourself to blame um, for, for doing that. Is that um, is is that right? If I ask, isn't that one of the things that um, uh, I think you said something to the effect like um, I get a really really good position, and then my I just drop the ball or something, and then I lose my position. It doesn't really. Haven't done that very often. Certainly not lately, obviously. But um, yeah, I mean, there have been some tournaments where something like that's happened. It's coming close to the end of a tournament that might have been leading. I just remember one example in one, uh, one New Zealand championship where I was leading up to the end of round eight and then I lost an interesting game in round nine which I perhaps could have done better in and that ended up costing me a title. But again, yeah, one of those things, it's just like life, you have to sort of accept that and get back on the horse. Um, yeah, because that's what this is about, is, this is how I see it, is chess and life and all that sort of thing. And, and how it relates to life and yep. and and quite often with my juniors I say to them you know like um, in, lo in life you have to take the good with the bad you, you know? do you, you do know? but yes, you don't want to take too much bad chess um, and how life imitates chess and um, there were some good examples of things in life that were you know similar to what had happened to him on the chess board maybe I'd better get something on that because yeah. he'll have a, a certainly different way of looking at it um, so, moving ahead, what have you been your favourite chess moments? My favourite chess moments? Well, we've already talked about winning the New Zealand Championship. Yes. I guess representing New Zealand at the Olympics for the first time, and the first time for me was um, in 1990, when we went to um, Novi Sad in uh, so you're about 12 then Yugoslavia. No, I was a little bit older then. Oh, you were about 12, weren't you? <laughs> a little bit older then. Oh, 34 um, <laughs> now. Hold on. Do the oh, um, so that was um, yeah, that was um, quite an experience. Um, I didn't get to play, unfortunately, many games in, in that Olympia, but um, it's always you know nice to play internationally. Um, there's been some other tournaments. There was the North Island Championship in 1990, uh, which was my first and only win of that tournament. Haven't played in it since. Um, so yeah, certain moments. I guess drawing with. Um, with Tony Miles, Grandmaster in 1992. Wouldn't that be um, your best one? Well, I mean, it was only a draw. Um, I won his queen for a rook and rook and knight, but I should have, um, you know, there was, there was an opportunity to to possibly win a win a pawn a little bit later in the game, which I uh, which I missed. It wasn't one of my best tournaments, but um, obviously uh, drawing with, with Tony was a, a good result for me. Yeah, I, I, um, I recall you told me that the the other results. Did you did you um, did you have any games after that game, and were you able to? So like clear the, so like the. <laughs> well, it wasn't. You know, again, it was only a draw, so it wasn't a win. 
I mean, I have beaten, <laughs> um, you know, grandmasters and simuls and things like that, but that was my best result against a grandmaster and an one overall one, yeah. game, one to one. Yeah, sure. Uh, but I haven't had the opportunity to play that many grandmasters uh, since we don't uh, live in live in Europe or anything like that. Occasionally they might come here and play in a tournament or you might play one or two in an Olympia, but the opportunities are few and far between. Um, so those are, I guess, the, the sort of special moments for me. Also meeting some of the stars of the world game. Um, I never got to meet um, Bobby Fischer, sadly, a bit before my time. Oh, but yeah. um, you know, meeting Kasparov and talking through things with him and talking to people like Murray Chandler and um, those sorts of grandmasters. Very, very interesting to hear what they've got to say about the game and, and um, what they've done both on and off the board. Yeah. Um, just um, off the cuff, um, like I really like Aaron Brockovich movie. Uh, is there any movie you really like and, and if so, why? Um, one movie I quite enjoyed many years ago, a uh, Michael J. Fox movie called The Secret of My Success. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's my movie I've sort of watched a few times. It's it's a comedy um, and it showed quite, you know, well in his personality and his and his acting and I really enjoyed that. But you've really got to see the, the movie, I guess. There's other comedy movies that I quite enjoy. I, I do like some action movies too. Um... You know, the James Bond classic movies, they're always sort of good fun to watch. And now we've got them uh, with the Mission Impossible series with, with Tom Cruise. And again, thrillers, uh, not not horror movies or anything like that, but the, the mystery type movies where you've got to anticipate what's going to what's going to happen and what's, um, what's coming. They're all good fun. So we're watching a little bit at the moment on, um, on Netflix. Mm -hmm. um, some of the yep, movie yep. series have been quite interesting to watch and to watch them all in one go, um, you know, many years ago, 30 years ago, you'd watch an episode then you've got to wait a week for the next episode to come along. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's sort of hard to remember everything, but being able to binge watch some series can be um, can be quite good fun. Uh, don't watch as much TV, maybe, as I, as I used to when I was a bit younger, um, being, you know, being busy with work and work busy, everything else. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but do enjoy sport as well. Um, you're probably going to talk to me about my book shortly. Um, it's only taken me 10 years to write, the 100 ten greatest years. sports people of all time. Yeah, so that's something that I've um, it's right on been the, focusing on. It's right on the, the right of the um, image, but it may be on the left of the image for once it's um, processed. Okay. The book. Good. Otherwise we've got more on your left or your right or... <laughs> is it your left or your right? My left. Oh, it's your left yeah, my but left. our right. Your right, yes. Am I right? Thank you. Indeed. Um, how do you relate chess to life? You've already answered some of those things already. You've said what Casper... Yeah, we've kind of already sort of got. talked about that. I, I suppose it's just, you know, getting people to think in a logical um, sort of way. Yeah. Um, not everybody does it that way. And the, I think, you know, the way I analyse chess positions is probably um, certainly be a better way and a more systematic way of doing it but some of the things that you see when you're um, when you're making a decision in life whether you should um, invest in this or whether you should purchase something you know chess does give you that little bit more of an understanding I think of what um, possible you know outcomes are available sort of to you and it's it's hard for me really to give a concrete example of something like that mm -hmm. but a good detective I think would um, you know playing chess would certainly help I think um, you know, make them a better, uh, better detective in terms of solving a some sort of crime, perhaps. A lot of the chess players have been successful in other fields. For example, have been successful on the stock market. Uh, oh, bridge players right. too. And uh, yeah. many years ago, a a, a, a large uh, stockbroking firm putting out an ad, put out an ad in some chess magazines. They they were looking for some pretty smart chess players who they thought could be successful in the. Um, in the stock market. Because they think that um, it's also, they're also good at counting cards and all that sort of thing. That's right, that too. Yeah. That too. And, and some of them probably are, and I think certainly the most of the grandmasters um, on average would have higher IQs than, than most. So the average IQ I think is about 100, and most um, really good chess players will be a lot higher than that, I would guess. Any advice to budding uh, new players? Oh, I think... I think 
you know, you've got a lot more um, resources that are available to you than there were in my day. Sure. So yeah. um, you don't need to necessarily go to a chess club to learn how to play chess or to improve your chess. You can play on the internet. You can play against someone on the other side of the world that can give you a, a good game. And you can use um, chess playing software to study games and as well as playing against the computer. Computers are a lot stronger um, than they were when, um, you know, in the 1980s. Um, it wasn't until the late 1990s that... Um, a computer finally beat the world chess champion in a, in a match. Yeah. Um, and that, um, you know, Kasparov was, was the probably the last human world champion. The computer probably overtook at that point. Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, there's a lot more, uh, it's a lot easier now to, to study chess. Um, but I, I would also encourage people, if they are wanting to be successful in chess, to include it with other interests. Um, yeah, see yeah. people that can come, all they want to do is play chess all day. Yeah. And um, it's important to get outside and kick a soccer ball around and sure. get plenty of exercise. Uh, yeah. Because if you're yeah. just um, playing, you know, playing a game on a computer or looking at a screen all the time, um, that's not that healthy either. So, of course so it's get, not. Get, a, get a mix. Yes. Get a mix and, and, and keep in touch with friends and, and things like that. Uh, but like with any sport, if you're going to be really good, um, you've got to be prepared to put the hours in. And swimmers, for example, they might start swimming at four o'clock in the morning most days. Well, they go to school and they've got to do that from a very early age if they want to be the next um, Michael Phelps. And it's probably not that much different with chess, except you don't need to go to a pool. Um, you've got everything sort of at home, so you're going to save. And you can watch the and you can watch the greats. You can, playing, and you, you can know. play through their games and everything else. So yeah, you've got all sure. the all the materials right, you know, in your home, and um, it's amazing. Even just a small phone device, if you like, an iPhone. Um, you know, it's got the Encyclopedia Britannica and everything on that. Uh, you know, it's bigger than some libraries. The information that you've got um, that you've got access to. So, um, yeah, a lot of um, there's a lot of resources, and um, it makes it a lot easier for someone I think that wants to wants to study the game. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um Generally speaking, apart from chess, what are, in life is important to you? If you well, want family, to answer, family's important to me. Good, good. Um, and I, know. I guess um, you know, I spend uh, you know quite a bit of time with my business, um, which means I, I don't spend as much time with the family as as I'd like. But um, that's an important part of um, you know. It, most of us do need to work. We need to earn a living. Um, but obviously, family is important and. Um, you know, my kids, just um, following what, what they want to do, they're still pretty young, they're only 14 and 12. Don't think either of them are going to be taking up chess in a great hurry. My son showed a bit of interest a few years ago. He, he played in, a, in a, a school tournament, school event, school teams event. Um, but again, don't not really sure what they're going to do at this point. So just sort of following and paying a bit of interest to what, what they might be doing sort of going forward. Uh, I'm sure they'll do something. Exciting. Are they going to be in front of Simon Cow something one day? Well, no, I, probably not. They're obviously okay. both, they're both into hip hop dancing, and they enjoy enjoy doing that. But um, yeah, like with anything, um, it's got to be something that you enjoy doing. I think if you that's gonna, pretty racy, it isn't it? It to be successful. It is. Yeah, and it's um, they're, they're enjoying that. Oh, so, good. So, good. It's good that you know. It's good that the the mingling and as well as um, being active and. Yeah. Not, um, you know, not sort of, um, anyway, uh, now this is for more previous, what helps you at the board? What activities and principles do you adhere to? Well, Believe getting good, good exercise is important because you're spending a lot of time at the chessboard when you're playing in tournaments and things and a whole game might take, you know, average game might take four hours or so. So it's important that you walk around during the games. You don't just sort of sit there the whole time sitting in a chair. It can be quite sort of un unhealthy. Um, obviously, the, a key part of that is concentrating and working out a strategy. Uh, but you do get breaks when it's your your opponent's turn to move, and they might be thinking for, say, 10, 20, sometimes as much as 30 or 40 minutes on a particular move. So it does give you the opportunity to, to walk around and, um, you know, have a drink and, um, you know, get a little bit of a, a, little bit of a break. But... Um, you know, chess is different to a, a lot of sports in that you need to concentrate for, for long periods of time. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, all games, in, in our day, we used to adjourn games after 
after six hours or so of play if a game did go for that long and then you might have a, a dinner break and then you might resume it again in a couple of hours. Uh, fortunately now all games are played in, in one session so our players get a certain number of a certain amount of time to finish the finish the game off. So yeah certainly um, I, I guess I'd encourage people to, to get you know not just to sit there just to, to get a little to try and take you know breaks where possible um, and to try and sort of stay focused. Strengths and weaknesses, what comments? Myself? Well, just any general comment you like to... You might not want to divulge any, any weaknesses. weaknesses. Yes. You haven't got any weaknesses. I think for most, That's a most, weakness. most of the young people, I think the strengths probably, they, they focus a lot on studying the opener. Yeah, sure. And um, we don't pay so much attention to the the middle game and not a lot of attention to the end game. And it's possible to pick up a lot of extra half points or points in the end game. Um, because that's where things can get a little bit, a little bit tricky, and just one or two key moves can make that a big difference between a, getting a draw and, and getting a win. So I would focus more on the um, more on the in game because that's something that um, most of the young players seem to be a little bit weaker on. Everyone seems to study uh, their favourite opening lines, and um, you know that all takes time because there's so many different variations. But just studying, getting a book out on say. Rook endings might be, or bishop endings, or knight endings. Just spending a little bit of time on that, just getting the understanding of what might be a, a drawing or a winning ending. Looks pretty game. simple though, doesn't it? In games, uh, they can, it can look simple. quite simple, but um, you know, it, um, you might be surprised. Um, you know, we see all sorts of um, funny results and funny things happening in endings between um, younger players that are watching, thinking, "Oh, this should be fairly easy," but but no, it's not. And if you know your end games well, it sort of helps you because you uh, in the middle game you can aim for end game positions, and uh, your opponent or may not the be opening. from even from the opening, which your opponent yeah. may not be um, may not be experienced with. So I won't ask the next question because I, I was like, "Where to from here?" Um, do you play blindfold chess? I used to play a little bit, but I was never really any good at blindfold. I would struggle even just to play one game at once blindfolded. I have done, I think, two or three against people at school at once, but no, I wouldn't consider me to be a, a good blindfold player. Oh, uh, good, I'll note that. All right, a lot of I'll other players... Down, I'll just write that <laughs> yes. down right now. A lot of other players are quite good at, at playing blindfold, but it's not something. I mean, I don't mind doing uh, playing people simultaneously when I can have sight of the board. I've done um, a number of those over the years, good, but yeah. blindfold, I, for some reason, I do find that uh, a little bit harder. It's not for everybody. What do you think of the word focus? How's important that word to you? Well, again, it, it does depend on a, <laughs> on a number of factors, and, and um, you know, chess is a, it can be quite a stressful game, uh, particularly if um, it's a it's a close game between two similar level opponents. Uh, the World Championship, I'm sure, is very stressful for the for the two parties taking place in a, a 24 game match or something like that. Um, but over the course of um, you know a four-hour, five-hour game, uh, particularly at our level where it's not a grandmaster level, uh, if you can maintain your focus, the opportunities generally come along. Even playing against a good, strong player over the course of four or five hours, they usually make a, a mistake of, of some sort, and they allow you an opportunity. And uh, to be successful, you've got to seize that opportunity because um, they don't you know come along very often. Even if you're playing someone like um, you know a grandmaster play them a hundred times, chances are you're going to win one of those games. And yeah, you never know right. when you're playing them just in a one-off game, this could be that one in a hundred. Yeah. So, um, you well, know, the opportunity, wasn't. yeah, that's right, the opportunity will, will be there. Um, yeah. Just takes one bad move and, yeah. um, you know, the game could be yours. Um, what's naught times infinity? Naught times infinity. I'd have to grab my calculator on that one. I think the answer is um, <laughs> naught times other? infinity. I think the answer is you can't actually answer that one. I think there is no answer. You can't do it, I think. And the uh, irresistible force meeting... The, uh, what did the immovable object? Immovable object, yeah. Yeah, yeah look, I, I don't know. Um, you know, everyone's got their own sort of style, if you like. I, I think my style was more um, more positional. I'd like to think it was more on the lines of uh, Karpov, say, than Kasparov. But uh, that's obviously interesting, a few, that a few hundred that points away from either of those two. Uh, yeah. The game. Oh, you reckon uh, a few hundred? A few hundred, definitely. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I enjoyed playing positionally as opposed to um, tactically. 
Um, what do you think, uh, speaking of Boris Spassky before and Bobby Fischer in 1972 in Iceland and all that sort of stuff, round six, what do you think of the time that Boris Spassky stands up and applauds Fischer? Yeah, well, I mean, Fischer, uh, sorry, Spassky rather was a, a great sportsman and um, that was obviously one of the best games ever played in a, in a world championship and certainly one of the most memorable games of, um, of Fischer. And um, yeah, he, he, he played the, he managed the match like a true champion, Spassky did, but it did cost him the world title. Um, no doubt he was possibly a bit distracted by um, um, Fisher's approach and everything. Um, but certainly yeah, he, was sure. a, he was a true gentleman, a true gentleman of chess. Yes, definitely. What do you consider, uh, you've already answered this about Endgame a wee bit, but what do you consider important for preparation at the board that's sort of been encompassed, hasn't it? Well, I suppose opening preparation is important. Again, it depends on who you're playing. If you're playing someone several hundred rated points below you, you probably don't need to prepare too much. You should be able to win. Maybe. <laughs> um, if they're 300 points lower rated than you, you I think your chances are about 90% of beating them. But if you're playing in a, in a round robin event with uh, opponents of similar strength, then opening preparation can be important. Um, but you can spend you know one or two hours preparing a certain opening and the opponent plays something completely different. Yes, right. So getting someone to actually go down the opening line that you're um, preparing for doesn't happen that often. Sometimes it has. People have gone straight down a line and boom, that's been the end of the game, but it um, doesn't very happen very often often that way. Kasparov uh, had a, uh, you know, a legendary you know, opening system, if you like, and the number of times you win a game where you think that um, his preparation has won in the game at home, and he has even said that. There's been one or two games where he's had the final position on his board at home when he's left to play the game. But that doesn't happen very often. So what's your favourite piece? My favourite game? Fav my favourite piece? piece. Um, yeah, sometimes people get asked that question. I guess it would be the piece that my opponent doesn't have would be my favourite piece. Um, but no, I don't have any um, particular uh, favourite piece. It's a, a question often asked of, of chess players. No, I, I don't think there's any. So is there a, f a piece that you most dread? No, no, I oh, guess okay. maybe... Um, no, no, there wouldn't be a particular piece. I use them all equally. <laughs> so I, I, I am known for my pawns a wee bit for some reason. I don't know why. Um, any strong beliefs, morals, or ethics? Uh, it doesn't have to be about chess. Have you got any strong beliefs, morals, oh, ethics? No, no. I'd like to think that I'm essentially an honest person. Um, it's important, I think, that you, you treat yeah. your opponent with respect and yeah, sure. integrity and all that, and that you that you work hard and you be good to your mother and all those sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, there's nothing. Um, no extreme beliefs that I have or, or anything like that. I, I'd like to think that I have an open mind. I'm open to all possibilities and. Um, yeah. So you like sort that. of answered this one coming up, Martin. Um, would you play if results were no good? Um, yeah, all you'd be time. less sort of less likely to play. It's not much fun getting beaten all the time at, at certain things. But some um, people play chess, and they never ever seem to do anything. No, no. Yeah, some. It does. Some even do. if I wasn't getting the results, I mean, you can only generally get sort of better, and I have sort of found that we've all had times when we you know, haven't been particularly successful in a tournament or two. Um, but then it's a case of going back and thinking, well, where did I go right? Where did I go wrong? Go back, having a look over the game and just trying to understand what the problem seems to be, whether it's something to do with the, the style or your assessment of positions or or what have you. And we all, we all have weaknesses. Um, the problem, I guess, for me is that I think I could improve my play and there's a number of areas which I won't go into which are like weaknesses, but it all takes time to do all that. And um, for me now, chess is, you know, it is a game, it is a hobby, it's a bit of fun, and um, there are other things that that I need to do, having a family and two young children and a, and a busy business. And mm, um, yeah. at the moment, I guess one of the things that I'm also focusing outside of chess is working on my, uh, on my uh, next Some book, which book. is the... Um, I haven't quite decided on the title yet, but it's along the lines Sounds of um, um, 100 sporting moments that shocked the world. And I yeah. think we've got um, 
I think we've got one chess moment in there as well. So I think it's just one chess, one chess moment, yeah. So what if no chess? I, I know this sounds all about chess, doesn't it? Well, I guess sports, so you know, yeah, not so much sort of playing, it's sort of more watching. And yeah. a lot of people, when they do stop... Um, you you know, like the Warriors, don't you? Well, I used to be a sort of a bit of a Warriors supporter, but um, they have sort of struggled in, in recent years. They did make the playoffs uh, this year, but um, you know, so that's a lot. The to... question before about results, no good. Well, yeah, I've sort of struggled with them, um, and mm. yeah, obviously results are you know are important, and results do affect you know the interest and how many spectators you get along to a game. Yeah, ever sports enjoy, fan. Though. Always enjoy watching the rugby and supporting mm. the you know supporting a lot of New Zealand teams like the cricket team. Uh, we perhaps don't always have the success success that we that we'd like to see. Um, but even you know other sports like you know even enjoying watching the, the tennis and the, the baseball and and things like that. So maybe when I retire, my wife and I we might travel the world a bit more going to, to sporting events. I'm not sure so sure how keen she'd be on that on that idea. But that's certainly something I'd like to like to think about. I'm not getting any younger. I'm mm -hmm. going to be working, I guess, for at least another ten years or so. But um, you know, I'd like to do um, a few other things during that time and when the time comes for me to. Uh, to stop work. So, mm. did you um, did you get what could be termed as a dud game? And I've dropped some questions from here, by the way. A dud but game. Did you did you get games where you think oh, I played a dud? Uh, yes. Oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Sometimes you know, you know, things just don't seem to go your way. You get in an uncomfortable opening, which you perhaps don't know a lot about, and then it drifts through to the middle of the game. It's worse, and it can be quite torturous sort of trying to hang on when you've got no real hope so um, yes we all get we all get games like that too where someone outplays us from start to finish but then it's a case of after the game going back and thinking well what could I have done differently um, you know maybe this opening isn't doesn't suit my sort of style of play and um, looking at other avenues but and also giving some ideas of where you can we can improve going forward mm-hmm mm. um. How, did you have any losing streaks at all, and if so, how did you handle them? Never really had any losing streaks that I can remember. I can think of some winning streaks, but <laughs> I wouldn't have lost. Um, you know, I never lost more than two or three games. So you no know, more than three games in a row okay. in a particular tournament. I have. I don't believe. You have. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it's not oh bad, yes, hey? I do. Yes, I do remember that tournament. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, yes, um, but no, no. Um, there's no. Um, I, I suppose. Part of the reasons you tend to block those sort of things out, um, but I have um, I have lost possibly um, psychologically. <laughs> yeah, possibly. I've lost two games in a row in New Zealand championships. Oh, not yes. very often. But that's no lost, that's um, no rule. Well, I've only lost seven games in total in New Zealand championships, but um, twice I lost two games in a row. But, um, again, it doesn't happen. In fact, was it three times? Something I hadn't actually con contemplated. Yeah, oh. it's three times, isn't it? Yeah, of the seven games I lost, they were in um, they were in groups, three lots of two. So thanks for reminding me of that, Dave. Oh, th yeah. sorry. Um, right. For me, please, can you answer how do you, how do you think I can cope past 50, 50 something? <laughs> well, it's not like you know, it's not a physical game, so you don't need to worry. It's not like a sprint. You know, I mean, imagine what, how fast Bolt's going to be at running the. 100 metres when he's 55. Oh, he'll probably still beat me. Well, maybe he will, but I can't see him doing it in, say, 10 or 11 seconds. <laughs> that's amazing, isn't um, it? <laughs> so that's one he's of the things about chess. Oh, awesome. it's, okay, people, a lot of people think it's all about memory. It's not. Um, it is important to remember certain variations and certain themes, but once you get to a certain level, I think regardless of how old you are, you never tend to lose you know, a, a certain... You retain a fair bit of your um, your strength. So there have been some very um, strong grandmasters. Victor Korchner, I can think of, for example, who was playing great chess at grandmaster level into his 80s. Yeah, sure. Um, he died. And even, even um, you know, people like um, Gary Kasparov, while he, he no longer plays chess, he'd certainly be in the top 20 in the world if he was to come out and play in a tournament. He has played in other Blitz events. He's beaten a number of, you know, grandmasters in the... Uh, that are currently ranked in the world's um, top ten. So um, age, I don't think, is, is that much of a barrier for, for chess players. Um, if you want to be the best chess player in the world, if you want to be a, 
you know, your chest peak is normally, I've been told, around 34 years of age. Um, but there's no reason why you can't be playing good chess at 44 or 54. Uh, as I say, completely different to a, a physical sport like um, like running or tennis or, mm -hmm. or even boxing. Does anyone... Um, do uh, has anyone sort of annoyed you at the board with that detail? You um, can't say me here. No, I, I can't think of anyone that's really annoyed me at the board. Sometimes you might get people that are, you know, tapping their fingers and, and doing things like that. Uh, but no one has really sort of distracted me like that, I, I mm -hmm. don't believe. Um, certainly there's no one that has a habit of doing that with, with other players that, that I've played. Um, you know, chess is generally a, a sort of a, a quiet game, and and people are, um, you know, are encouraged obviously to, to make as little noise as possible. Yeah. And uh, we do so. have arbiters and referees, just like in other sports. And um, if they see you uh, making a bit of noise, they'll um, they'll do something about it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, it is it is hard to distract um, distract an opponent. Really, um, it's not just your own game that you're playing. You might be in a tournament hall, and there are twenty of other games that are taking place maybe more so um, if you're distracting your opponent chances are you're uh, distracting some of the other players that are also trying to focus on their game too mm. so you've got the the book that has been reasonably successful hasn't it the hundred yeah, players I mean people. you know again there's not a lot of rugby players in it there's a couple of uh, New Zealanders in the book um, yeah so sure. we've had a bit of interest and in it is available in paper plus and the do you want to divulge warehouse. who they are? Or? Two rugby players, yeah. I, um, I know who they are. They're Jonah Lomu is one and of them. And Colin Meads. And Colin Meads, Pine, Pine Tree. Tree. Um, arguably two of the best rugby players ever. Richie McCaw, as you know, he was a little bit unlucky not to get a place in there. But I've only yes, got, I know. I've only been got talking two, to you about that. only got two rugby players in there. Um, and again, you know, it's, it encompasses all sports. So we've got all the soccer, tennis, boxing, you know, even sports like... Um, you know, less less popular like fencing, ice hockey, what have you. Um, they were all represented in the book, and um, yeah, I've been reasonably happy with how it's going. But we need I, to look I at getting find it absolutely moment. fantastic. I, Thank I, you. I do. It's not just the colour photos either. Right. You know. Good. But I do like the. Yeah, it's reasonably. I, I do like to see the. But I'll tell you what my my re um, friend from church um, said to me. I really love Bolt. And I thought he was talking about the cartoon figure, you know, the dog, Bolt. Yes, yes, and, um, so I was a bit confused. I thought, what's that got to do yes, with yes. <laughs> Who's, oh yeah, I like Bolt too. It's a, it's a very, you know, it is a very easy book to read because it's only uh, it is. Uh, a couple it is. hundred pages. Yeah. Uh, two page or a page and a half and a colour photo on each of the, uh, yeah. the superstars of the various sports. So, um, yeah. Um, not easy, easy so do you know number down. do you know number seventy eight? Number seventy eight. I couldn't tell you off the off the top of my head. Do okay. you know who number seventy eight is? Um, <laughs> no. If you told me the sport, I've got. I I would have to guess. It might be a darts player, but I I could be totally wrong. Uh, or it might be a. Um, no. You I know, know who number ten is? I know who number ten is. That's your uh, your friend uh, Bolt. <laughs> my yes. friend. Your friend. Bolt. Now, do I say that? Word right, you're saying bolt or you're saying bolt, yes. You're saying bolt. You got it. Okay. Hey Martin, it's my absolute privilege and and I'm so uh, I'm happy for you for you to give me your time today. Uh we won't divide. Well, thank you for having what me here, time David. It is and where yes. it is and right. how you find it. <laughs> <laughs> but I really, really enjoyed this interview and like uh, to me it would be worth just coming up to Auckland for because I'm not sure well, Myself, I've, I've enjoyed sure. talking to you, and yeah. thank you, thank you for having me. And um, no, you were having I me. You, I hope you found this. I got um, a chocolate in there. <laughs> cup I hope of you water. found what I've had to say interesting. So uh, yeah, no, no I, I did, appreciate, yeah. appreciate you uh, taking the time to talk to me, Dad. I'm sure it's going to be a very popular um, video. Uh, you can get all your sports friends to watch <laughs> it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and so. Thank you very much, Martin Dreyer. You're welcome. Mr. Fide Master Martin Dreyer of chess, of course. Thank and you, David. And professional person <laughs> as well. Thank you. Bye for now.